the leadership starts with self leadership so you are the leader of yourself you can lead by example aloha welcome to another session of our conversation series with women thought leaders from the indo pacific region today our guest is don yu babachan from Myanmar Ministry of Foreign Affairs. She is currently serving as a Myanmar representative to the UN as a minister counselor. Her portfolio includes disarmament and arms control and peace and security. She previously served as the assistant to the Myanmar National Security Advisor. You could say she was the wing woman for the NSA. This was an historic posting for her in Myanmar since national security policy making has been primarily dominated by men. She is a very experienced diplomat with over 2 decades of posting and service representing her country throughout the world. We are thankful to Don Yu Babatun for taking time out of her busy schedule to have an insightful conversation with us today. Welcome Don Yu Babatun. Uh your experience and if you don't mind sharing uh your strength and special perspective you brought to those positions. And it was really great to meet with you again after a while and also good to be back in touch with APCSS. And uh, I thank you for this virtual interview at this unprecedented time. I hope director and everyone at APCSS are well and safe and uh we uh, celebrated Myanmar Women's Day on 3 July uh, so um th th this is timely to share my thoughts on this topic to come back to your question yes i was fortunate to work under the national security advisor Uh, starting from the day one of his appointment until I left for Geneva. So, as you know, we are a young de democracy in transition with a lot of uh, challenges, including the challenges uh, left over from the colonial days. So, the NSA has to deal with a right, wide range of security issues, uh, including uh, geopolitics, terrorism. uh human security uh, cyber security uh and economic security as well so to me this is a very interesting and challenging experience uh as i have mentioned earlier uh security is uh, part of my studies so uh, i could make uh, the best use of what i have learned at school and also my experiences at home and abroad throughout my diplomatic career so it it also includes the training courses from the APCSS and see so my experience there has improved uh, my knowledge on a range of security issues and he is uh, as you may know a retired uh, distinguished uh, ambassador and uh, i could observe how diplomacy works at the high level at the international level in the context of national security learn and experience how multilateral diplomacy works i understand uh, more on the international perspective uh, international uh, norms and practices uh, as well as opportunities and challenges for developing countries like Myanmar at the national multilateral level so i was uh, uh responsible for human rights until early this year and since february i have been with another pillar of un system to some amendment and i also take care of uh, some of humanitarian affairs so i'm back to the security again and this amendment uh, as i see it is a very broad and it is a uh, broader un engagement in the maintenance of international peace and security 
it tells us uh, everything from conventional arms, nuclear, uh, cyber security, biological weapons, to imagine uh, technological issues like artificial intelligence. So it directly relates to the humanity and human security. So I'm very glad that I can involve in the process and I'm very proud to be there as a woman, as a woman representing Myanmar uh, because security has been, uh, as you have mentioned, traditionally a male dominant area. Thank you. You have had about 20, over 20 years of foreign service. So you have taken many leadership roles. Uh, and so I wanted to ask you what leadership attributes have you practiced and de developed as you grew professionally over 20 years? Yeah, honestly speaking, uh, it is uh, hard to say exactly. My understanding on the leadership is uh, quite simple. Uh, to become a good leader, uh, first of all, you need to be a good follower and a good leadership. So you put yourself in your leader's shoes. So another thing is that uh, the leadership starts with self-leadership. So you are the leader of yourself. You can lead by example. So to me, uh, uh, for me, I'm trying to be, uh, to open my eye and to, to open my mind as well. And I try to learn new things every day. I'm trying to develop uh, uh, courage uh, to change myself for the better. So uh, my interest in a, uh, in a change for gender equality started uh, since my childhood in my family and also in my marriage as well. So I firmly believe that we can take the lead in promoting gender equality at our homes because Everything starts from home. Great, yes, that's right. Everything starts from home. And so you have two uh, sons, right? So yeah. to prepare your son to, uh, uh, towards this kind of uh, evolved uh, norms, uh, the gender equality, right? So can you tell us a little bit about how you train and teach your children at home? Yes, uh, actually, yes, this is very um, uh, good question. So we, uh, as I have mentioned, everything started uh, from home and women uh, are, plays a very important role because uh, women are the one who closely taking care of the children and to become the children uh, uh, responsible citizens of the country. So in our case, uh, uh, my husband is a diplomat and I'm also a diplomat, so uh, uh, we are the career couple, so we try to set example for our son. So, uh, since they see their mother working, uh, they, it is not unusual for them to working with women and to be led by women, and so we also teach them how to respect women, uh, how to respect other women as they respect to their mother. And they, they are actually, uh, uh, they have a lot of exposure. So they, they, they are in different countries. Uh, they grew up in Thailand, they grew up in Myanmar, and they grew up in uh, Hong Kong and also in the West, in the US as well. So now in Geneva, so they embrace the diversity. So, and they appreciate and they respect different culture and uh, they also respect uh, different gender orientation. So uh, they do not even, uh, you know, like if they hear any language that sounds uh, a little bit discrimination uh, on others. 
So I'm very confident that uh, they will be the advocates uh, for gender equality in the future. Wonderful. I am confident as well. My next question is, what do you think are the barriers to women advancing to the decision-maker levels in public sector and institution? Uh, so actually, women's uh, part is not easy for sure. And in many um, uh, countries, and also here at the multilateral institution, we still see the under representation at the leadership position um, due to the different challenges. So even in the multilateral institution, uh, it is also learned that uh, there remain some languages, uh, you know, uh, not still not gender, uh, not gender neutral. So in many places, you may see uh, resistance from the male and structural constraints, uh, cultural constraints, and inequality in taking care of household chores and so forth. So this is why uh, even a man and women uh, reach to a position together at the same time. But uh, the situation uh, they have gone through cannot be the same. Um, but uh, we have a lot of positive development, you can see, uh, in my own country, in the regional, and in the multilateral level. So we are fully aware of it, and we are progressively uh, addressing it. So looking back uh, at my home, uh, in my country, we see increasing number of uh, women in public and private sectors. So we have a lot of uh, women uh, business entrepreneurs too. Uh, it is a rising trend. And uh, at my ministry, the majority and some said that uh, 75 percent. And so the majority are women in the junior and mid-career level. So sooner or later, we will see them in the uh, senior level and you know, in the leadership position. So we see a lot of uh, positive change in our society as well. And increased number of people, or increased number of men, they are now involving in promoting uh, gender equality as they know the benefit of gender equality can bring in for the economic development and peace process. Uh, so now, so we can pass it uh, on to uh, the next generation. So I'm very optimistic uh, for the future of Myanmar. As you said, since many Myanmar women are entering the diplomatic service in record numbers, we should see more women ambassadors and leaders representing Myanmar in the near future. So do you think Myanmar women lead differently than men? In other words, do women practice different leadership style in comparison to men? Uh, I would try not to make a difference between men and women when it comes to the leadership. So I think it is not much to do with uh, being a man or women. Uh, so we all are human beings, so we have uh, different backgrounds, or we have different uh, leadership styles. So it depends on individual personality. That's my view. And also intellectual background experience and the way of thinking and upbringing, so on. And so, so on these, these, all of these uh, has impact on the leadership style of each and everyone. So one thing I noticed is that um, uh, men from the older generation uh, seem to be a bit uh, uncomfortable uh, with, uh, you know, working with, uh, closely with women and to be followed uh, by women or led by a woman. So men from the newer generation, uh, as I see it, uh, 
they don't seem to have uh, any problem working with women. They tend to accept uh, women taking the lead. So uh, compared to men, women were trained to take care of family uh, since they were young. So, uh, and the experience in their daily struggle to balance at home and at work uh, make women stronger and more capable when they take, when they step into the leadership role. Uh, as mentioned, I see women in Myanmar generally are very capable uh, taking double or triple responsibilities. So since they are taking care of the family welfare and security, they are leading the family. Uh, I remember what you repeatedly mentioned when I was in Hawaii, the leadership is actually not a position. <laughs> so the uh, leadership, uh, so we can see Myanmar women are leading uh, family every day. So what is different uh, from many countries is that in Myanmar, so women always have the right to vote uh, since the beginning. Uh, why women from the Western countries were struggling for the right to vote. And uh, Myanmar women also have equal rights for land ownership and public employment and equal pay for the similar job. And now many countries are speaking up for equal pay, and, but Myanmar women always enjoy equal pay for equal job. So we have the right to divorce and we also have the right to inheritance. And so we can say that we have equal legal rights and we have a constitutional guarantee for the equal rights. And so Myanmar women, uh, we can say, enjoy equal status in many areas. And uh, I'm very proud of being uh, women in Myanmar. While women are generally included in all aspects of Myanmar society, do you think their perspectives are considered and their voices are heard in the security sector? Um, as, uh, when we talk about the security sector, um, uh, uh, my interpretation uh, of security is uh, more than hard security. So uh, as you know, uh, international security environment is constantly changing. So today's security sector includes uh, many uh, non-traditional security issues, including uh, healthcare, economic, climate change, and so on. So in these sectors, uh, women are very much involved already. And the COVID-19 has also changed uh, the way we see uh, the security. So it changed our perspective on the security. Uh, so now health security has come to the top of the agenda. So we see uh, uh, health girl workers, um, women nurses in the front line defending and protecting our people uh, around the world. So if we talk about the human security in Myanmar, and uh, women are already there. Yeah, uh, in fact, we see uh, our country accelerating uh, equality and gender inclusion. Uh, uh, it is uh, ongoing efforts and it is progressing. And women are already in the security sector as I have mentioned. And so if we look at the hard security now we also have many women in the hard security sector. And I have also come across uh, the recruitment of uh, more women uh, in the hard security sector. So in the peace process as well, we have already agreed to include 30% of women representation in every sector. So we are uh, trying uh, for that and we, uh, we will see the more inclusion of women. So I believe that um, uh, women's perspective will be a heart more and more in the future. Okay. 
All right, great. Well, thank you so much uh, for, for spending time with us uh, today. And uh, uh, we are very proud of uh, our alumni doing so well in, at the UN. Thank you. Thank you very much for interviewing.